wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to do the right thing at the right time for the right reasons. Wisdom is skillful living. Wisdom is living with savvy. And what we need to learn is that wisdom cannot be found on our own. The search for wisdom is not a solo affair. We need other people to help us become wise. Today, as we continue our teaching series on the book of Proverbs, we're going to look at wisdom in terms of how companionship helps us to grow wise and stay wise and to become wise. And so we're going to look at a lot of different passages this morning in, in your Bible. You may be ready to flip some pages, but, but we're going to start with one verse that's going to guide us all the way through. And it's Proverbs 13, 20, and it says this, He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. A person who walks with those who are wise will become wise, but those who hang around fools, you're only going to hurt yourself. My translation of this verse is simply this, play golf with somebody better than you are. Play golf with somebody who's just a little bit better than you are. Only twice I've been privileged to play Southern Hills here in Tulsa. Beautiful golf course, intimidating golf course, especially the first tee. And the first time I played Southern Hills, I was with a good friend who was a better golfer than I was, and so I was a little bit concerned that my game, uh, no pun intended, really wasn't up to par. And so we're standing there on the first tee box. He lets me hit first. And off to the left of the tee box is this little wooden shed. It's a little maintenance shed. And I'm a lefty, and so I, I square up. I say, just, just ex don't try to hit the ball. Just execute the swing. And so I hit the ball, and I could not have hit that shed to the left of the first, uh, first fairway if I had tried. I could not have hit it better. I mean, I smacked it, and the golf ball reverberated. There were people on the fifth tee who heard the boom, boom, boom. And they stopped, and they looked up in the sky, and they said, oh, Darren must have hit the shed on the first tee. So my friend, trying to suppress laughter, he said, go ahead and take a second shot. So I put the ball down, don't hit the shed, don't hit the shed, don't. I hit the shed a second time. If nothing else, I'm consistent. So it wasn't a very good start to my game that day, but my friend, who's so much better than me, over the course of 18 holes, with his patience and with his instruction, by the end, I was hitting so much better than I was at the beginning. He who wants to grow wise must walk with the wise. Those who want their game to become better must be with those whose games are already better, right? So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about wisdom in terms of companionship. Psalm 1 is a, is a great psalm. It talks about a person who plants their life by trees of living water. We plant our lives near God. And as we plant our lives near God, it doesn't mean that we won't experience the seasons of life. There will still be winter, spring, summer, and fall. All you got to do is call. There will still be those seasons, but what we're immune to is drought because we have planted our lives near God. By contrast, says Psalm 1, those who are wicked are like chaff. The smallest wind, it's just that what's left over after you take the kernel out, out of grain after you take the nutritious part. Chaff is just the shell that the smallest wind can blow away. You know what? When we plant our lives near God, we find strength. But if we're not careful, we, we read Psalm 1 as kind of a solo adventure. That we plant our lives near God, but what we need are other people who plant their lives near God and we share their strength. We manage to stay green in defiance of age and against all odds because we share companionship under Christ together. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at wisdom and how it pertains to companionship. Another way of saying this is if you want to grow wise, you have to be around wise. You need to have the kind of friends that help you do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to sample several different parts of Proverbs, because what we see in this book are four characteristics of people you ought to surround yourself with, the companions in life that will help you grow wise. And just to be honest, uh, some of these characteristics are pretty predictable, right? But this is not rocket surgery we're talking about. 
This is pretty simple stuff in surrounding yourself with wise people, but there is a characteristic or two that might be a little bit surprising to you. These are the kind of people we need to put around our lives if we want to grow wise. Let me say this before we jump into the Proverbs. We should love everybody. In fact, I would encourage you to be careless with your love. Somebody once said that there's no one you can't love once you know their story. So be careless with your love. Love anybody and everybody, but be careful who you allow to influence you. And don't we often get that backwards? We often are careless about who we allow to influence us, and we're too careful about who we love. Reverse that. Be carefree in your love. But be very intentional with who you allow to influence you. And what we're going to discuss today are four characteristics of the people that we should allow to influence us. Here's the first characteristic. If we want to be wise, if we want to grow wise, we must surround ourselves with loyal people. So this is what Proverbs 17, 17 says. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. So in case you don't know what today is, today, July 18th, the third Sunday in July, is Sunday, Sunday. It is ice cream Sunday, Sunday. And of course, all these things are just made up, right? So this is the day you celebrate eating ice cream Sundays. Saturday, July 24th, you know what that is? It's drive through day. Now, I actually worked a drive through When I worked in my fast food days, first job, I worked a drive through People who come through a drive through are really in a hurry. People who come through a drive through they don't want to chit-chat. They don't want to wait a long time. They want to get what they want, and they want to get out. Look around at your companions. Look around at your friends. Are they drive through friends? Do they only come around when they want something? Do they only come around when they want to bark orders and get on their way? In other words, the next time you go through a rough patch, see who's around you. See the people who stick by you when they have no thing, nothing to benefit from them being around you, but they have every reason to give to you. They have every opportunity to give. When you go through the rough patch, look who's around you. Look who sticks with you. Those are your consistent, loyal friends. John Hinkle is 39 years old. He and his dad, as he grew up as a young man, he would, they would bowl together. Recently, his father died. So John Hinkle, in honor of his father, went to the bowling alley and bowled a perfect game. And in a way, this is odd, he did this with his dad. He put his dad's ashes inside the bowling ball, and he bowled a perfect game with that bowling ball. Now, here's what I... Th- And when I hear that story, I think, man, that's just really creepy. But I also think that that's loyal. Here's a son whose love for his father transcends even death. Yeah, it's still a little creepy, but it's also a great picture of loyalty. Have those people who stick by you thick, thin, everywhere in between. Listen, if you want to become loyal, you need to hang around loyal people. And you're going to see what you're capable of. And you're going to grow in that capability of being loyal. Okay? So here's the second characteristic. Candor. If you want to grow wise, you must be around wise people. That means choosing loyal people. It also means choosing to be around people of candor. Okay? So this is Proverbs 27, 6. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Actually, this is my favorite proverb of the entire book. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. One friend is worth more than a thousand people who flatter. So it is not easy sometimes surrounding yourself with candid people, but I've come to value this. And I'm, I'm thinking of two people in my life right now. My wife is a candid individual. Every Sunday after worship, we, as we're at home, we're talking about the day, I'll say, tell me, tell me about the sermon today. Tell me about the message. She has never once told me what I would want to hear. She's told me what I needed to hear. Now, Do I like that candor? Do I crave it? No, sometimes it's inconvenient, but 
I grow as a communicator. I grow only by knowing the truth. The same is true of my administrative assistant here. I've given her permission to be candid, and sometimes I can tell I'm making a decision, and, and she winces just a little bit. And I said, tell me, tell me what you're thinking, right? If I want to surround myself with people who just tell me what I want to hear, I'm going to feel good, but I'm not going to make the best decisions. My goal in life is not just to feel good. My goal is to make great decisions. And in order to do that, we must surround ourselves with candid people. Now, we must surround ourselves with candid people, not quarrelsome people. There's a difference. Five times in the book of Proverbs, the Proverbs say, whatever you do, don't marry a quarrelsome person. Two of those references, one said, uh, having a quarrelsome wife is like a dripping roof. Okay? You know what it's like to have a faucet dripping? You try not to think about it, but it's the only thing you can think about, right? And it just drives you crazy with its incessant dripping. Proverbs also says that having a quarrelsome wife, it's better to live in a desert, right? Because not only will, will that person, their dripping drive you crazy, it, they'll suck you dry, okay? Now, what's true of choosing a spouse, we must think about that for all of our companions. We should not put quarrelsome people around our lives, and you have a say-so in this. Randy Levy was 14 years old just a few years ago. This is back in 2017. She had tried to be a varsity cheerleader at her school in Pennsylvania, and she didn't make the squad. So she was so angry, she went on to Snapchat, and I'm just going to say it like it is. Uh, she pretty much said, F the varsity squad, F the school, F everything. And she had this big rant on Snapchat. Well, the school punished her for using inappropriate language, and she shot back at the school saying that she had freedom of speech, which she certainly does, and she wasn't on campus when she posted that, so she could say anything she wanted. That case went all the way to the Supreme Court. And maybe you heard it was finally resolved last week, and the Supreme Court upheld her right to say whatever she wanted to say off campus. And we do believe in freedom of speech. But was there no one in this young lady's life to ever look at her and say, maybe this is an opportunity to learn how to lose graciously? Maybe this is an opportunity to say, you know what, I might not be at the best at everything. And maybe this is an opportunity to develop resilience to become better than what you are right now. Was there no one in this young lady's life to say, the right to say something does not make saying it right? Was there no one to be candid with her? That's the only way we learn and grow from our mistakes. None of us have perfect vision around our life. We need other people to be candid. If you want to become wise, if you want to grow wise, you must surround yourself with wise people. Okay. Loyalty. Candor. Surround yourself with people who know how to give good counsel. This is the third characteristic. Now, there's, there's two parts to this, okay? There's the pleasant counsel. Uh, Proverbs 27, 9 says this, Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart. Just think about when you walk in a department store and there's the perfume counter and sometimes you stop and you smell the perfumes because why? It just, it just makes you happy, right? To smell good things. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and the pleasantness of one's friends spring from earnest counsel. Sometimes when a person says just the right word, just the right moment, you go, I needed to hear that. You know, it's pleasant counsel. There's another side to that as well. This is Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Sometimes there's pleasant counsel, and sometimes there's unpleasant counsel. There's the counsel that says, oh, I needed to hear that. Then there's the counsel that, that we say, yeah, I needed to hear that. that. That hurts just a little bit. Listen, do the people you surround yourself with, do they sharpen you? And sometimes that means there's a grinding that produces that edge. When my daughter was beginning to date, who is the person who is now her husband, she would often come home and, and we would talk about him and she would say, well, do you like him? Do you like him? And I go, the question is not, do I like him? The question is, do you like him? That's the question. But what I was really looking at in this young man who had become my son-in-law 
is who my daughter was around him. When, when she was with him, did he bring out the best parts? Because I know my daughter very well. I've known her her whole life. But, but was, he, was there value added? Was he making her a better, stronger person by the counsel and direction that he was giving her? Now, it was tough for me to say, is she bringing out the best part of him? And I think she does, but that's a two-way street. But I know my daughter well. Is this young man bringing out the best of who she is? And you need to ask that self, yourself that question in terms of people with you. Are they bringing out your best through the counsel that they give? If you want to grow wise, you must surround yourself with wise people. It means people that are loyal, people who are candid with you, people who give wise counsel. And then here's the fourth characteristic, people of tact, T-A-C-T, not a word we often use, people who have tact. Military personnel will tell you about something called reconnaissance fire. Reconnaissance fire is when soldiers are trying to locate the enemy, and so they'll fire into an area that they think the enemy is. And if they can provoke a response, getting the enemy to shoot back, then it confirms that's where the enemy is. It's, it's reconnaissance fire. The special team, special operators, they try to operate by stealth and in small groups. And so when they're out and about and there's that reconnaissance fire, they must resist the urge to fight back. They must resist the urge to shoot back. Why? Because they don't know, want the enemy to know exactly where they are. And so what they do is nothing. But they're doing nothing is actually doing something because it's keeping in mind that their goal is not to shoot back. Their goal is to accomplish their mission. And maybe by not shooting back, that's the best way to do it. We need people around us who teach us tact people who keep us from getting narrow-minded and getting tunnel vision and remember that we have larger goals in life at stake because sometimes we do this we just zero in on one thing the people of tact say remember the big picture remember what you're doing here so this is the most interesting proverb i'm giving you today in fact, it's a, it's a little package of Proverbs. This is Proverbs 18, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 25, starting in verse 11. A word aptly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Oh, what does that mean? So actually the better translation here is like apricots of gold in bowls of silver. What does that mean? Have you ever tasted an apricot or a peach? I don't know why. When I run, I crave peaches, especially when I run on a hot day. I start thinking about just biting into a big old juicy peach. Why? Because it's in season. It's perfectly ripe, right? So we have those people that, that speak a word that is in season, that is fully ripe. And it goes on. Like an earring of gold or an ornament of fine gold is a wise man's rebuke to a listening ear. So not only is, is a person of tact, not only are their words in season, but their words are valuable. If you have those people that whatever they say is gold, keep those people close, okay? Then there's a third part to this. Like the coolness of snow at harvest time. You have to think about these proverbs. Like the coolness of snow at harvest time is a trustworthy messenger to those who sent him. He refreshes the spirit of his master. The coolness of snow at harvest time. So harvest time is in late fall. There is no snow on the ground in fall. It's not winter yet. But it's kind of using your imagination here. Imagine you're out working all day. You're in the fields. It's hot. Wouldn't it be great to have a snow-cooled drink? You know, and you, you crave that cool drink. What the tact of a friend, not only is it in season, not only is it valuable, it's refreshing. To have those people who speak truth and tact into our lives, that when our vision becomes too narrow, when our focus becomes too nano-focused, they help us remember the larger picture of character, of integrity, of truth. 
he who wants to be wise must surround himself with wise people. So right now, just look around at the people in your life. Look at the people who you've surrounded yourself with. Again, we should love everyone, but those who influence us, we should be very choosy. We should be very particular about those people. Are you surrounding yourself with loyal people? Are you surrounding yourself not with people who are quarrelsome, but people who are candid? Do you surround yourself with people who give good counsel? They, they tell you what you need to hear, and they tell you what you need to hear. And do you have people of tact that they surround you and they help you remember the big picture? They help you not to lose focus on what's most important. If you don't have these people in your life, begin to pray to God for people. I, I believe it's God's will that we be like a tree planted by streams of water that were nourished by God, but we don't do this solo. We need other people who share that same value of being planted deeply, rooted deeply in God. Begin to ask God for those kind of people. And the best way to attract those kind of people is to be that kind of person. Are you a person of loyalty? Are you a person of candor? Are you a person of counsel? Are you a person of tact? So there's one more proverb I want to give you, and here's where the proverbs um, almost lend themselves to prophecy. They almost become prophetic. This is Proverbs 18, 24. A man of many companions may come to ruin, may have all the acquaintances in the world that you want, but that doesn't mean they're going to be there for you. Here's the last line. But there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, this proverb is talking about just that one person in life. You can have a lot of acquaintances, but if you have that one person who's going to stick with you, that's of great value. But oftentimes, this proverbs is, it, proverb is used to point to Christ. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. You know, since 2007, the sale of vinyl records have gone through the roof. 2007, about 1 million vinyl records were being sold every year. By 2015, 20 million were being sold, and, and sales are increasing by 20% every year. Why? Digital music is so much more accessible, it's so much more convenient, but it's, this is actually called the revenge of analog, that true, digital music is more convenient. But vinyl music is about the experience. You know who Jesus is? Jesus is God gone analog. Jesus is God come in the flesh. Jesus is God who has come that we can touch him and understand him. And everything that Jesus teaches and, and all that he represents, not all of it is convenient, but it's about the experience of being close to him. And here's the deal. Jesus invites us plant our lives in Him, to be rooted in Him, to be rooted next to Him. And as our roots interlock with that of Christ, to become, become people who live a rich life now and have eternal life forever. Let's pray together. God, I do pray Psalm 1 over us today. He said, Blessed are those who do not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the company of mockers. But we plant our lives in you. We are like people planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. The wicked are like chaff. They blow away at the smallest breeze. But when we plant our life in you, plant our lives in Christ, we discover life. Even when there's drought going on, we have a source of life that is second to none. So Jesus, would you surround us with healthy, strong, deeply rooted people, but most of all, would you help our lives to be rooted in Christ? We pray this in his name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may God grant you peace now and forever. Amen.